Right, hello, hello, hello once again, brothers and sisters. I'm Pastor Abed, and today we'll be discussing the mystery of the gift of tongue. You see, it has been brought to our attention that as one begins to seek and inquire of the Lord, one finds many who have become well known or so called holier due to their ability to so-called speak in tongues. You see, it is as if the Most High himself chooses those that can obtain a rhythmic cadence to their voice. However, few have understood the verses that have shown the power of the Most High through, through the Holy Spirit. So today, brothers and sisters, I would challenge you today and all of those who would hear this video to inquire of those who have proclaimed themselves to be holy and or or more holy than those who do not have this gift that that speak in a barbaric tongue. What are they saying? You got it. As well as, is it pleasing to the Most High? You see? So without further ado, brothers and sisters, let's get right into the mystery of the gift of tongues. You see? So if you have your Bibles with me, turn with me to the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 21. And it reads, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You see, brothers and sisters, this allows for us to shed light on why the Most High gave mankind the power to speak. The usage of such an instrument becomes crystal clear. You see, because it is through this very instrument that one can divide or one can unite. It is through this very instrument, brothers and sisters, that we or some of all the nations of the earth, the people and the languages can unite or divide. With that in mind, I would like to take you back, brothers and sisters. Take you back into the book of Genesis. Into the case of the Tower of Babel. For up. Utilizing a very particular instrument. You see. It was used to destroy this particular plan. That was plaguing this world. Check it out. Turn with me to the book of Genesis. Chapter 11 verse 1. And it reads, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Now you see, brothers and sisters, it is here that the Bible tells us of the attention of those that will seek to reach up into heaven. Whose thoughts and minds were not connected to the Almighty's will for mankind. Seeking to totally, totally obliterate his will for mankind. You got it. And, the and, and as the story unveils, one can see that, that these people were beginning and wanting to make war against the Most High. You see, now I know 
Many of you are asking, well, Pastor, well, 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 where did you get that from? Well, what scripture did you get that from? That's, that's not in the Genesis chapter 11. Where did you get that they were trying to make war? Well, hold on, brothers and sisters. Let us, let us go to an ancient record. Let us, let us jump into the book of Jasher. Chapter 9, verse 25, and it says, And the build, building of the tower was unto them a transgression and a sin. And they began to build it. And while as they were building against the Lord, God of heaven now, they imagined in their hearts to war against him. Now, brothers and sisters, now we are in the book of Jasher, which was a record that clarifies many different things written of in the Bible, which those who wrote the Bible had knowledge of and was and frequently quoted from. Now, let me show you within the Bible itself some of these quotations. You see? So, so you would have the book of Joshua, the book of 2 Samuel that speak of this book of Jasher to give greater understanding of what was going on during this particular time. Now, getting back to the matter at hand, let's jump back into Genesis 11 and 5 and continue on, you see. So this tower that, that those who imagine in their hearts to come against and make war with the Most High, look at what he did in verse 5. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man builded. And the Lord said, behold, the days is one and they have all one language. And this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Verse seven. Go to let us go down and there confound their language. That they may not understand one another's speech. Now hold on, brothers and sisters. As you can see, this, this gives us greater understanding of why the Lord had to intervene and to cause this city to crumble. Yeah. But check out verse 7 now. Check out verse 7 and what it reads. I'll read it again for you. Go to let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. Are you hearing me? You see. Now we can see clearly now, brothers and sisters. This shows the fruit of Babel. This shows why this city was named the Tower of Babel of which some of you are can go and see the remains to this day. This, this justifies and show the fruits of Babylon. You see this? So this, this language that the Most High utilized to confound them so that they may not understand one another's speech clearly shows the intentions behind the utilization of this. Well, you follow. So, Pastor, what are you saying to me? Hmm? What what are you saying? Huh? No one could understand what they were saying. Their speech was not interpreted. As a result, this tower was dismantled. And the people were scattered. Are you following? Now we can see clearly, brothers and sisters, to what purpose this was for, which was to not provide edification to those people, but to actually divide, to sever out them from accomplishing their plan. Letting us know that even if we are speaking the same things, if it is not in his will, it will not be done. You see, this is what happened at the tower, brothers and sisters. You had you had those who were speaking of one language at one time, 
whose intentions were evil against the most high. You see. So, so, so he divided them up. He confounded their language. To discontinue. Their, 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 their imaginative thoughts to come against him. He confounded their language. And then he scattered them. <laughs> Are you following? You see? Now, as we get further on into the now, as we get further on into this discussion, brothers and sisters, I want you to check out the similarities to when the most high uses it to confound the language and when the most high does the opposite later on. Now, now keep this in mind now. Keep this in mind. Because this was going to make a little bit more clarity once we get into to some of the things that the Apostle Paul was speaking of. The power of utilizing the tongue to bring others into the understanding of God. Check it out now. Check it out. You see? You see? Now, many persons actually to this day, brothers and sisters, are participating in Babel. Rather than speaking in that tongue of, of languages that others can understand, they are babbling, utilizing a few scriptures to justify their babbling. Yeah. To, to show that they are more holy. Yeah. To show that, that they are on this walk. You see? To show that they are severed apart. You see? Not understanding the intentions. Or what they would do. You see? Now check it out. Let's go into some of Paul's writings. That others get confused. Not realizing that they are working against the most high. You see. Turn with me now. If you have your book. Turn with me. To 1 Corinthians 14 and 2. It is on your screen for you. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. In the unknown tongue, speaking not unto men, but unto God. For no man understanding him, how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Verse 3. But he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself. But he that prophesied edified the church. I would. That ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongue, except he interpreted that the church may receive edifying. You see, brothers and sisters. Now, this text lets us know that, that those who speak in an unknown tongue where no one can understand them. These edify themselves. Yeah. Not me that said it, but the scriptures, brothers and sisters. Not to everyone that hear them, but only to themselves. However, notice that Paul didn't say babbling. <laughs> well, you might ask me, well, Pastor, well, why didn't he say babbling? Why? Because babbling doesn't edify anyone. No one can understand what you're talking about. No one can make sense of what you're stating. It is as if one is just spewing stuff out and stuff is coming out of your lips without any understanding being brought forth. Makes a pool of confusion. You see, this is what is going on today, brothers and sisters. Many people are just following others. Tagging along for the ride, trying to present themselves as spiritual because others are doing it, because others are, are, are feeling this emotional being down their back. Yeah, you feel it? Yeah. They don't want to feel left out, not realizing that they are being overtaken emotionally. Yes. You see? If you all think about it, when many people start this speaking or this babbling or this sound or this cadence or this rhythmic talk, 
Why don't they do it only after they've been hyped up? Why don't they do it after they've been emotionally excited? Usually by some form of music. Why don't they do it when they're sober? Rarely do you hear someone someone calm or, or tempered or tempered in their self, in their spirit, talking about some EKOC. Yeah, Coke spelled backwards. Only after they're being excited do you see this 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 rushing of spirit began to move that makes unknown sounds. Not, not providing any edification to those that are around. But nonetheless, I'm not the apostle here, brothers and sisters. Let us hear what the apostle Paul states here. You see, he says that in verse 4, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself, but he that prophesied edified the church, brothers and sisters. Are you following me? Now, this is crystal clear. Now, there's more now. Let's go into 1 Corinthians 14 and 26. Follow with me now. How is it then, brethren? When you come together, every one of you have a psalm, have a doctrine, have a tongue, have a revelation, have an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. Verse 27, if any man spake in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at most by three and that by course and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. You see. Now, rarely do you see this, brothers and sisters. Rarely do you see anyone saying, this is what this person said. This is what this man or this woman has stated in their language that they're spewing out to the audience. Rarely do you see it, brother, sister. Yet everybody hears what they said, but no one can tell you what they say. You see. Paul says to such as one, let them keep silent. Do not speak. You see? You see, th this is where we're at, brothers and sisters. It has become the norm that, that, that people began to babble and make these rhythmic sounds as if others can understand them. As if, as if others can understand what they're clearly stating. You see, Paul makes it crystal clear. If there be no interpreter, let them keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. You do that at the house. Are well, you follow? You see, now there's more. Now, there's more. Turn with me to the book of Acts. We're going to start at the second verse, brothers and sisters. You see? Check it out now. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting, and they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Verse 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together. And were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. You see. Now check it out now, brothers and sisters. But many believe that the people were confounded because of the sounds of the voices that they heard. You see. Many persons think that this is the unknown sound of the babbling that was being uttered from these holy men as it is today. 
You see. However, when one reads carefully and begins to examine this step, this text more in depth, one can see that it's actually the opposite, brothers and sisters. <laughs> yeah. They were confounded because of the fact that they heard and understood their own language that was being spoken about. You see? Yes. They were confounded because they heard their own language that was being spoken. That means they understood. Don't worry. Pastor, what, 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 can you show me that? Can, can you show me where it says that? Don't worry about it, brothers and sisters. Turn with me to the second verse afterward. I'm in Acts 2 and 7 now, brothers and sisters. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galilean? And how hear we every man in our own tongue? Wherein we were born, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea, and in Cappadocia and Potos and Asia. You see, verse twelve, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, "What meaneth this?" Others mockers said, "These men are full of new wine." You see. Why? You see, this actually gives greater clarity to why the Most High allowed for this to happen. You see? You see, at this time, the understanding and hearing was needed to be spread it to allow for those persons to believe on Christ, the Messiah. They had to hear it. How can you be utilized by someone you can't even understand their speech? You see? You see for an example, if I speak in baby language to you now, who will, who will hear what I'm saying? Who will understand what I am actually trying to convey to them? You see? Now, now, this is a miracle right here. You see, when one can understand what you're saying who never learned that actual language. Now, this is the miracle. You see, it would be as if those who could hear me in English, but they only know and understand Russian, but yet they understand what I'm saying. You see? Are you following? This is what's going on. It's, it's, not, it's not what's happening in this world until where you see those who are babbling and, 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 and making these odd sounds and sounds that have been shown to be incorporated into demon possession. It's not that, brothers and sisters. You see? The tongues gives you, ed it provides edification. If there's no edifying, <laughs> you might want to look into it. <laughs> so, Pastor, what what would be the reason for this, Pastor Abed? I know you might be asking. Yeah. You see, the reason is because of Isaiah 28 and 11. For the stammering lip, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. Are you following? So if he would speak to his people, they would have to hear him and understand. Are you following? I hope now, I hope this is becoming crystal clear for you now, brothers and sisters. Now, as we move on, let's, 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 let's grain a little bit more. I'm in Acts 2 and 10 and 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy, Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also 
was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnifying God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that, that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Now, here's the situation, folks, where the Lord showed Peter that not only will it be Jews that will get this Holy Ghost or this Holy Spirit, but Gentiles as well, that they can partake in this gift of the Holy Ghost as well if they come in like manner as Cornelius. But I would like you to turn your attention to verse 46 now. How can they know they were magnifying God if they did not understand? Now, I know some of you persons are going to say, well, they, they maybe were dancing or the, the spirit told them or they were speaking this jargon language. But the question to them would be. Have they read the next chapter over? <laughs> yeah chapter 11 as we press on and read Acts 11 and 13 now and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house which stood and said unto him send me to Joppa and call for Simon whose surname is Peter who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all the house shall be saved and as they began to speak the holy ghost fell on them as on us in the beginning you see now this is what peter had th now this is when peter had come up to jerusalem and those of the circumcision contended with him and his response was this what happened look at verse 14 which reads shall tell the words the house shall be saved how would he know what word was spoken if he did not understand or have an interpreter you see and my last question how did the holy ghost fall on them at first <laughs> you see for, for those of you who think that this is babbling, that this is the, jar, the jargon that is being spoken about in our modern churches, you are sadly mistaken. You see, you are sadly mistaken. Check it out now. You see, prior to the disciples receiving the Holy Spirit of the Holy Ghost, <laughs> Christ had already given up the ghost. You see, Christ breathe it on those who continue keeping the commandments in order that they may receive the promise of which was to come I'm in John 20 and 22 and when he had said this he breathed on them and said unto them receive ye the Holy Ghost you see so this is Christ breathing on them who continue in keeping the commandments of the Most High, that they may receive this promise of which was to come. You see, so this is the beginning of this. Now, as we walk going towards how the Holy Spirit moved on these men in our podcast, one will begin to understand the timeline of what was going on. You see, you see, one will begin to to make sense of all of this that has been happening until our day. You see, now before we get into the history with this, folks, I would like to tell you all that the Most High is about edification. If there is no edification being understood brothers and sisters you must question the doctrine that is being taught you must question the spirit that is being conveyed now now we're going to get into the, the the historical information of of the actual 
rhythmic cadence that is being brought about in some of these churches today and showing that that these are actually demonic demons possession the spirits that 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 you would feel on the on the back of your back when you when when one begins to have that 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 rhythmic la 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 cadence yeah you see history shows that that this is demonic possession history shows that that those who are experienced this experiencing this does not have that holy spirit you see so now so for those of you who are who are in our podcast listen up 